Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video and also a new episode of the viewer mail. And on my table you can see I have some coprocessors, Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors, those are a little bit older right now. I mean this one is from 2013. That is one newer generation. I would have to look it up but I think it's from like 2015 to 2017 something in this direction. What we have here are CPUs in shape of a VGA. They have a PCI Express times 16 slot can be plugged into systems. Something which is really rare well rare in our world not rare in like the high-end server segment because there are supercomputers made totally out of those Xeon Phi products and we will today take them apart take a close look at them improve the cooling because a company from Austria contacted me because they are using those for scientific calculations and they had some temperature issues with those as you can see or you can't see the fact that they don't have any active cooling they have passive cooling or you can see maybe if you look through it there is a heatsink inside here and it's it, and it's designed to be built inside a server rack and then all the air is pushed through this heatsink and this way it's cool it's not meant to be in a normal consumer system therefore they had some temperature issues and contacted me and asked if I could help them improve the cooling and we will mount some water cooling gear on those together with a dual socket CPU board. We will mount everything inside a case, try to improve the cooling, take a closer look at those. That's the plan for this video. Underneath this beautiful blue Intel cover, we have a Xeon Phi 7120P, first generation Xeon Phi Knight's Corner. And yeah, the first impression, it looks like a VGA. Some online databases also listed this thing as a VGA, but it's not. It's just a coprocessor which has 61 cores, 61 CPU cores, and it's using hyper-threading to transform then not into 122, what you, what you would assume, but into 244 threads, which is kind of interesting. So turning one core into four threads in total. And the outer shape, yeah, just looks like it's a VGA, but it's not. I would say let's just go ahead and open this thing. Remove the eight screws on the backplate. Backplate is mainly steel, all those parts right here. This could be copper, but I think it's also steel. The backplate is fixed with eight screws in total, holding together the cooler and the backplate at once. And the backplate has a very interesting way it works. Something I'm surprised that no GPU vendor somehow stole this idea. It looks very very interesting. But first of all, let's try to remove this part. And that's the back plate from the inside. Some black stuff for isolation, then some mixture between like a thermal pad and a thermal compound. It was liquid at a state when it was applied, but then it hardens like a pad afterwards. And those copper parts right here is what I find kind of interesting. Another one on this side, you can see it's soldered to the backplate. That was also the reason why I assumed that one part of the backplate could either be nickel plated or also made of copper. Compared to a VGA, we have some cutouts in the PCB, which is very unusual, something you cannot find on any VGAs nowadays. Those cutouts are making contact between the backplate and the cooler itself. Therefore, the backplate becomes part of the active cooling solution. That is quite interesting because the backplate can directly transfer the heat to the cooler and it's not just doing a passive heatsink on the backside. Something I could assume would be nice on future VGAs. And here we have the Xeon Phi with the removed cooler. A lot of residues still from the thermal pad, thermal paste mix. We'll remove this in a second and then we can take a closer and more beautiful look at the PCB with the CPU. The cooler itself, just a massive cover right here to make contact with the memory ICs, then contact to the inductors, power stages right here. And we have a interesting looking thermal pad in the center, also vapor chamber in the center. This graphite sheet kind of reminds me of the latest generation of the AMD cards where we also saw something similar that's quite interesting. It also feels quite thick, maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter thickness, maybe even a little bit more. Therefore, yeah, thermal compound, thermal paste would perform better for sure. And there we have the coprocessor in the center, Xeon Phi 7100 with 1.23 gigahertz slash 61 
Also interesting design with the small IHS in the center, quite a big substrate or PCB around it with a lot of SMD caps. This 61 core CPU has 244 threads. Normally you know like a 10900K which has 10 cores, 20 threads, just has the double amount of threads with hyper threading than the normal amount of cores. And on those Xeon Phi CPUs you have four times the amount of threads than what you have cores. And that also reflects what these things are designed for. They are designed for a massive amount of threads you can utilize with a lower performance per core. Therefore, for gaming, this would absolutely not work. You cannot even use it because if you just plug it into the slot, it doesn't show up in CPU-Z like a CPU you can run Cinebench on. That's not how those things work. You have to make your dedicated programs which are targeted for this thing and then utilizing it. Visually, it's not that much different from a normal PCI Express x 16 VGA. We have the core in the center or the processor surrounded by a lot of memory. In this case, we have GDDR5 with ECC, which means memory or error correction. And we have 16 gigabyte of this in total, considering that this pro product is from 2013. That is quite a lot. We have some temperature sensors on here, one on the bottom in the middle. This one is for checking temperature of the memory modules. Then we have a temperature sensor up here on the top left corner. That's for checking the temperature of the heatsink on the exhaust side. Then one more temperature probe on the right side for basically intake temperature or intake heatsink temperature. And then just some PWM controllers for voltage regulation right here. And again, if we're checking the heatsink without cover, center part is made out of copper, and that is the part which makes contact to the CPU itself. Then left and right side, we have aluminum fins connected over a heat pipe, and those parts are dissipating the heat from the memory chips and also from the VRM, so th thermally. This is quite a challenge, dissipating 300 watt in total. I mean, if you compare this with like a 2080 Ti, it's not the biggest heatsink and it has a higher power consumption, therefore you can probably get an image or an impression that this thing is not that easy to cool. We have an Iceman cooler. It looks like a VGA block. It's from Iceman Cooler, as I said before, it's a brand that you can probably only find on like AliExpress, at least here in Germany. I'm not sure if this is listed at any retailer, but yeah, on AliExpress it's easy to find, but not that easy to find anymore when it comes to the Xeon Phi blocks. But let's just go ahead and mount this thing. And in case you're wondering, Sheik is doing much better already. Doesn't have to wear the Pixar lamp anymore. Doing much better already. And that is the current state with the thermal pads, thermal paste. And in case you're wondering why this is so little thermal paste, it's because we're going to perform just a simple mounting pressure test for the start. See if we can get a proper connection between the block and the inductors, power stages, the memory chips and eventually also the CPU and therefore just using very little amount of thermal paste. If you have no experience with a water block or a brand, rather just double check to be sure that everything is working and fitting fine. And that's exactly the reason why I'm doing that. You can see obviously there was contact between inductors and the block and also the memory chips and the block because everything else is sticking on the block right now. But yeah, no thermal paste contact with the core and the block. Yeah, we'll have to investigate that. We're using the original backplate, but you can see, yeah, it's bending a little bit. This part of the backplate, which is making contact or supposed to make contact with the cooling block for heat dissipation, seems to be a little bit too thick. Therefore, we'll have to grind off a little bit of that part. Without thermal pads on the inductors, it looks much better pretty much perfect contact. The pads on the inductors are not that important anyway. You're removing most of the heat over the power stages and the power stages are much more temperature critical. Therefore, that is absolutely fine. We have enough contact over the memory chips and the power stages. Therefore, this should be okay. Both Xeon Phi are assembled, ready to go. Here is the setup I have been using for my testing with the two Xeon Phi. That is a Broadwell E setup with two Xeon 22 core per CPU each. I was using some Noctua blocks for my own testing simply because it was a little bit easier to do some debugging with air cooling than with water cooling. But I got those beautiful water cool heat killer CPU blocks and going to change them now. So two of the cooling blocks on here. Yeah, absolutely love when this happens. Was about to mount the coolers. 
checks the manual. Usually I'm not even checking the manual because you just look at the screws and then you usually instantly know which screws you have to use for those. But looking at the screws, I was like, those won't fit, these won't fit, and this is also not going to fit. Check the manual, supposed to use something like this. Yep, those are not included. They should be included, but they're not. We'll have to try to find a different solution, like my own screws. Making some good progress, everything is sitting, well, except for the Xeon Phi is sitting inside this Lian Li V3000 case. Beautiful case and pretty much perfect for this product because it has so much space. Starting off with the radiators on the side, we have a 360 in front. Well, it also allows to have two HDDs on top here, which the company will later put in themselves. Then we have a DDC pump right here. We are going to use a single loop system, therefore a single DDC sitting right here. We have a 360 radiator on top and one more 420 radiator on the bottom. Xeon Phi is now finally sitting inside the system as well. I had to play around with pretty much every adapter I have right here. You can see there's still some different combinations left on my table. The problem was that I was trying to fit something like this inside where you have a twisting or a twistable fitting adapter in between. The reason is you would try to first install this fitting, the rotary one, put it in the bottom one and then insert it into the top part and if it's rotary it makes things a lot easier and a lot better when it comes to um, stability and access to the parts. And one more reason is the Xeon Phi doesn't have this small notch in the back which is holding down the PCI Express slot. This does not exist on the Xeon Phi. Maybe you noticed earlier when we were taking it apart. Therefore, this gives a little extra stability. Finally done with the assembly. System is running. Pump is filled, you can see. There's still a little bit of fluid missing, but not much. Filled it with the Corsair XL5 fluid. So far running happily fine. Looks great. Yep, Xeon Phi's are having a party. That's great. And in the device manager, we can now find the two coprocessors installed and ready to use. And that's pretty much also all we can do with the system right now. The problem is that you have to write your own dedicated program or tool to run some benchmarks on the Xeon Phi. It's not that you can just open Cinebench and run it on the Xeon Phi. That's not how it works. At least if you have those coprocessor. Uh, co <laughs> At least if you have those coprocessor PCI Express cards, if anyone, that, if anyone out there, she go. At least if you're running those PCI Express coprocessor cards, but if anyone out there has knowledge to how to write those tools, how we can utilize it, I would like to use GPU Pi with it. If you have any idea how we can do that, I still have the newer generation where we will build a second system with those, with uh, Xeon Phi 7220P, if I remember it correctly. If you have any idea how this could work, feel free to leave down the comments below. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye.